all right assalamu alaikum everyone let's begin so we were doing p3 differentiation in the last session we talked about the product rule and the quotient rule right so those were the two things that we did in our last session and we did uh, a, a few examples on both of them as well now today's class is going to be extremely important because in this class we're going to discuss uh some of the more complicated concepts that we have in p3 differentiation uh the first one is actually not that difficult parametric differentiation but the second one implicit differentiation that's slightly confusing at first uh we will be discussing these two methods today and then hopefully do a couple of practice questions as well all right so we are going to be doing two things today parametric differentiation and implicit differentiation and that's the plan for today let's start with the easier of the two and that is parametric differentiation now let's try to understand this uh let's say we have a function that looks like this i have an equation that looks like this y equals 3t squared plus 4t minus 7 this is one equation that i have and i have another equation which is x equal to 2t cube minus 4 for instance these are two equations that i have these are known as parametric equations why because we have two variables y and x they are both defined in terms of a third variable which is t in this case these equations are known as parametric equations parametric equations how do we recognize them we have x and y in this case the two variables that we have x and y are defined x and y in this case are defined in terms of a third variable in terms of a third variable this third variable that we have that is common between the two so we have t here we have t here this third variable is actually known as parameter there's a terminology that we use for this it's called a parameter and that's the reason that we call this set of equations parametric equations so the parameter in this case is t that's your parameter okay now in such equations what if we were looking for dy over dx what if we were looking for looking to find dy over dx that's the idea now one possibility could be that we could try and make t the subject in one of these equations so for example we could try and make t the subject here t cube equals x plus 4 over 2 then take cube root right and then put that in the other equation in place of t and then simplify that and then find dy over dx from that but in most such cases the examiner will require you to find dy over dx in terms of t so you're not going to do any substitution here you will need to find the derivative dy over dx in terms of t now how is that going to work remember there was a rule that we did in paper 1 that was called the chain rule how is that going to work you have three variables y x and t in order to find dy over dx what we do is we actually use that chain rule and how would that work you would say dy over dx could be written as if the third variable is t we could write dy over dx as dy over dt into dt 
over dx using that chain rule. So remember how the chain rule used to work? So if you have dy over dx, and you want to make a chain out of this, what you can do is you can write dy as the numerator of the first fraction, dx as the denominator of the second fraction, and then in the places that you're left with, you, you get the third variable, which is dt. In this case, you have dt here and dt here. All right. So in effect, dt and dt, they would get canceled and you would be left with dy over dx at the end. All right. So if you can somehow find dy over dt and dt over dx, you can figure out what dy over dx is. How do we do, do, it, do that? We have the two equations. We have y equal to 3t square plus 4t minus 7. That's one equation that we have given. And the other equation that we have is x equal to 2t cubed minus 4. These are the two equations that we have. Now, in order to use this chain rule, what we can do is we can differentiate both of these equations. So find, for instance, dy over dt from this. dy over dt. What would that be? So differentiate y with respect to t. 3t squared, what's the derivative of that? That's 6t. 2 into 3, that's 6. 6 times t plus 4. Then what's the derivative of x with respect to t? So here we find dx over dt because x is the subject. We'll have to find dx over dt like this. That becomes 3 into 2, that's 6. t squared, derivative of 4 is 0. So that's a 6t squared. So we have dy over dt and we have dx over dt. Now what we can do is we can use this chain rule. We can say, let's use this chain rule to find dy over dx because dy over dx could be written as dy over dt into dt over dx. Now, do we know dy over dt? We know that that's 6t plus 4. Do we know dt over dx? Well, we don't, but we know the reciprocal of that. We know dx over dt. So if dx over dt is this, reciprocal of this, if you take reciprocal on both sides, dt over dx would actually turn out to be 1 over 6t squared. And we could input that here in place of dt over dx, which would be 1 over 6t squared. So dy over dx therefore turns out to be 6t plus 4 divided by 6t squared. This is the value that we have this is the expression that we have for dy over dx in terms of t. This is derivative of y with respect to x. So that's the idea of parametric differentiation. You would have two equations given. Of a third variable, so you'll have y equal to something, x equal to something. And you would have to find dy over dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. All you have to do is you have to use the chain rule. How? You'll just differentiate those two equations one by one. You find dy over dt, dx over dt. So if we found them here. This was dy over dt. This was dx over dt. Then use the chain rule, input values, simplify, and you get dy over dx from that. All right. So this is how parametric differentiation works. It's pretty straightforward. Just differentiate the two things separately and then apply the chain rule like this. All right. Let's have another example. Let's have a look at another example. Sometimes they will be using some other variables. So if you have some kind of uh, a scenario given, you might have volume of something. So let's say there's a sphere and you have the volume of the sphere given like this, four over three pi r cube. All right. And let's say you also have the surface area of the sphere that's represented by A. That equals four pi r square, right? Surface area of a sphere is given by four pi r square. Surface area of the sphere is 4, 4 pi r square. Now, okay, let's check my internet connection. I think it's okay. All right, so you have these two functions, v equals four over three pi r cube and a equals four pi r squared. Now, let's say we were looking for the rate of change of volume 
with respect to area what if we were looking for something like this we need, we wanted to find this dv over da how would this work dv over da how can you find the value of dv over da now we don't have a direct relation between v and a and we want to find dv over da in terms of r what can we do for this we can first differentiate v with respect to r and find dv over da and let's see what that turns out to be find the derivative of this volume with respect to r the constant remains as it is so 4 over 3 remains as it is pi also remains as it is so it's a constant being multiplied that does not change power of r that's 3 gets multiplied and we reduce power by 1 so it becomes r squared and that leaves you with 4 pi r squared that is dv over dr let's find da over dr as well let's differentiate the other equation again 4 pi is a constant that's being multiplied that remains as it is r square how do you differentiate that you multiply by the power reduce the power by 1 so it's just 2r so this gives you 8 pi r da over dr equals this okay and now since you're looking for dv over da what would that be you would say let's use the chain rule dv over da could be written like this the first fraction would have dv in the numerator the second fraction would have da in the denominator and then here we're going to have that third variable which is r in this case so we say we have dr here and dr here all right now what's dv over dr we know that that's 4 pi r square let's just input that here what's dr over da we don't know but we know the reciprocal of that we know da over dr that's 8 pi r just take reciprocal of that and input that here that's 1 over 8 pi r simplify this pi and pi get cancelled 4 over 8 gives you 1 over 2 and r square over r that gives you r so da over dv over da therefore turns out to be r over 2 this is the derivative that we get from this r over 2 and that's what we were looking for all right dv over dr da turns out to be this is how parametric differentiation works uh i hope that makes sense it's not that difficult this is what you would do here in this case just differentiate the two given equations one by one then apply the chain rule you find that derivative all right